interest rate, knowing that um, they have consistently said we have to be a manufacturing country to be able to stabilize exchange rates. No matter what we do at this point, it's, it's seen in some circles as temporary. Well, like I said, say, you do the temporary measures first for stability, then you think about the long-term effect. Ordinarily, what, we, what the CBN is doing normally should have a, a, a positive effect. Okay. But Nigerian economy, I keep saying, has a peculiarity. What is this peculiarity? Yeah. The informal sector mm. is largely driven by cash. If you start that sector of cash, you kill the economy. You saw what happened during the Naira denomination. Yes. So it's the informal sector. And that sector has not been captured on how to go about improving maybe cashless or whatever in that, in that space. Yes. And they, like he said, the fintech company seems to be the one to bridge that gap. Mm. But now there's a challenge. Most of them, they have to get back. You have to um, 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 register. Yeah. And, all. and these people in the informal sector seem not to have that time. They don't have that patience. They don't have that patience. Yeah. So... What you do, you look at it now, you're talking about a retail. When you write, when you are, uh, rise the, uh, raise the rate, yeah. what happened? First of all, you are trying to hold back liquidity. You are trying to say, okay, like bank for the 5%. Now, what happened? That means banks lending to the real sector will be less. Mm. And you are now saying in one hand, we need to develop the productive sector. How do you develop the productive sector if the banking sectors are not playing a key role in developing that sector hmm. in terms of lending. Now, lending has gone up today. As when the CBM made that announcement, what it means is that the cost of funds, the cost of lending has gone up. The minimum lending should be 26.45, what the CBM is. So that's the minimum. And then it depends on your level of the type of business you are doing. Bank will look at your risk level of your business. Yeah. And so sometimes you are seeing some business lending at 30%, 34%. How are they going to profit? And if they do that again, what do they pay? They pass it to the consumer. Yeah. So what do you see? They you goods, pay more. You pay more, goods goes up. And when goods goes up, what happens? Inflation. Absolutely. Now, take it the other way around. The earning ability of the average Nigeria has not improved. Mm -hmm. So what happened to those goods? Most of those goods are there in the warehouse. They That's cannot so. be sold. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at it and look at how do we address our challenge. Mm -hmm. In the short term, you need to stabilize the FX market. Why is it so difficult to do so, especially with regards to we knowing the value of uh, Naira and yet we are not yet able to stabilize? You see, the CBM said they want to drive a market determined exchange rate. And I've said it over and over. You don't leave your exchange rate to market forces. Market forces are there to take advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm a businessman. And which is what we've seen. That's mm -hmm. what we've seen. So if you like saying the EFCC after them, I've said it over and over. We have three classes of people in the market, any market in the world. You have those that are traders, you have investors, mm -hmm. and you have speculators. Mm -hmm. They are part of every market. People that speculate. They are not looking at fundamentals. They don't care. They say, look, if I go in there, where we call in Nigeria, cash out. I'll cash out before anything happens. They are speculators. What you do for speculators, come up with a superior strategy. And that's where you say they'll get their hands burned. We saw that happen. When Naira went to 1,900, they were thinking, oh, it will get to 2,500. Yeah. And we saw the, what, what did the CBN do that time? They just injected inject liquidity into the system. But as they were injecting liquidity, our reserve was depleting. Depleting because we're not attracting yeah, inflow. Just, yeah. The president has traveled to get investors into the economy. But when you look at the investor that we've gone in about, if you look at the data, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the data from Nigeria Exchange Group, that's the data we have now. It's about 18 point something billion that has come in. And when you look at the investors that have gone out, there are more. Hmm. So we need, and I keep saying it, why we are not seeing the effect is because no investor wants to come to your market when your exchange rate is not stable. So on that premise, why are we concerned about foreign direct investment? Why don't we create policies that will go local investment so that once foreigners see this, they can come of their own volition? See, when you talk about growing the local investor, I, I keep saying, how do you grow it? Infrastructure. You have mm -hmm. infrastructure. 
So you still need the foreigners to come in to build your infrastructure. Okay. So there's a challenge of infrastructure. There's a challenge of transportation. So even if you are trained, you want to build a look, do you have control over the price of gas? Mm. It's still valid it's on the dollar. The dollar. Just yesterday, we made to another, before now, we, we think that we can buy uh, diesel at 1,050. One. Yesterday, they said that because of 1,000 naira, but now it has gone to 1,100 because of the exchange. This is not a problem. We are no more importing diesel. Mm -hmm. mm. But international market still determines, still determines the price. Mm. So it's a dollarized global economy, mm -hmm. <laughs> not just a Nigeria economy. But what I say in essence is in the short term, you want to attract foreign investors. Your influence, then that's what the CBN is trying to do. They try to make rates high. But unfortunately for us, if we are hiking rates, if maybe the, 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 the US Central Bank decide to, to bring down their rate, they, 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 then you have a lot of investors flowing to us a high rate in Nigeria because of the return they will get. Mm -hmm. But up to this moment, the bank, the CBN, I mean, the, 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 bank, bank, the bank of America is still thinking of hiking rate because they have an inflation. You remember, I said we started to get, at the time we started, where we were doing 18%, they were 12%. Yeah. Today they have about 4%, and they are still saying, look, we have not gotten it here. But their own, dis, their own uh, um, issue of inflation is as a result of destruction in terms of supply chain. Mm, yes. Our own is multi dimension. You know, they say it's only in Nigeria you get so much of those multi dimension poverty. Now we have multi dimension inflation. Mm. Now, what is driving that inflation? You look at microeconomic policy, like what the CBN have just done now tightening liquidity, lending to businesses, cost of funds becomes high. That is micro. Demand and supply, supply, the structural change. That is the structural chain we're talking about. It's not there. You are, most of your demand comes outside the shore of this country. The country, yeah. So how do you um, um, able to meet that one? Mm. Then come the muster. Exchange rate now added to our own. Right. That is, you see, it's a multi-dimensional challenge. Of challenge. Uh, right. So you have to deal with the 